back to Roya and Rescue. This is the next part in the series of CPR guideline updates for 2010 that I want to cover. And this, I'm just going to methodically work my way through these different subjects that we're going to be updating so that you have an ability to actually index by title and pick them out, whether that be through YouTube or Roya and Rescue or right from the Pro CPR or Pro Trainings website. Um, but I thought, you know, I've kind of tossed this around a lot. And I think that this is probably the best way to go about it. So I'm just going to get right to it. Hopefully they'll be short, concise, and to the point. And the only ones that might get lengthy are the ones that I've got issues with and we want to discuss. So let's get right into the very first one that was released through the, the American Heart Circulation release. And this is on EMS and 911 dispatchers and how the dispatcher should provide CPR instructions. The 2010 AHA guidelines for CPR and ECC more strongly recommend that dispatchers should instruct untrained lay rescuers to provide hands-only CPR for adults who are unresponsive with no breathing or no normal breathing. But keep in mind, unresponsive with no breathing or no normal breathing. The dispatcher should provide instructions in conventional CPR for victims of likely asphyxial arrest, drowning, choking, hanging. Okay, so conventional CPR should be uh, encouraged by the dispatcher if they, through their series of questions, believe that the patient is a victim of asphyxial cardiac arrest. If they believe it was non-asphyxial, then they're going to go right into the compressions only resuscitation. This is different from the 2005 in so much as it says, quote, the 2005 American Heart Guidelines for CPR and ECC noted that telephone instruction in chest compressions alone may be preferable. Okay, so <clears throat> there's the major differences, and here's some of the reasonings why. Because it's difficult for a dispatcher on the end of a phone line to see what the, what the rescuer is seeing, it's hard to know if the person is unconscious versus conscious and especially when a bystander is giving some mixed signs and symptoms. Um, this is going to try to help us avoid um, the, the bystander basically seeing agonal respirations, which is that gasping, um, <clears throat> abnormal type of breathing, and not misunderstand that as the person's awake and breathing. So there's a series of questions that are going to be asked by the dispatchers to try to get through that and find out is the person really in cardiac arrest? Should compression only CPR be initiated or should we do full CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation uh, with the 32? Remember, 100 compressions or more, two inches deep or more. And later on in this part series, we're going to talk about what's really the, the hype in the news right now, which is specifically compression only resuscitation or what they're nicknaming COCPR. Um, and I'm going to talk about my feelings about that and a lot of the research, and I'm going to also try to put the links to, directly to the research and the science so that it helps you to be able to find it and read it for yourself and not go through the, the tons and tons of pages like I have over the last uh, week or so. So, that being said, I hope this was very helpful for you if you're in the dispatch uh, 911 sector, and uh, again, these will be released... Um, formally in all education classes at the beginning of next year, probably when they roll out, when all instructors roll out their new guidelines. Um, so watch for your management to give you the new guidelines and when to initiate those new guidelines. And until next time, this is Roy on Rescue, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.